Hi everyone, thanks for joining me once again on this Saturday morning. It's story time once again. If you haven't been to my channel before, my name's Peter, thanks for joining me. And today I'm gonna to be reading out five stories that have been sent to me by viewers who have visited Thailand, okay? The, the reason there's five today is because the first two or three are quite short. The last one is the kind of main event, you could say. It's a longer, a longer story, very, very interesting. Okay, so let's not waste time, as I always say. Let's get straight into the first story. I recently came across your channel and felt compelled to share my Southeast Asian dating experience with your subscribers. Perhaps a thing or two can help others navigate this modern dating world. As COVID was ending, I needed to do something out of the ordinary for me. At the time, I was soon turning 50, newly single and never ventured outside of my traveling comfort zone as a Canadian. Having two failed long-term relationships, the second being with a Malaysian woman I met in Canada, I took some time out alone. But after a few months, I went online to try some dating once again. I gave Tinder, being the most popular at the time, a whirl. After quickly realising how crappy dating is in the West, for various reasons, I won't get into here for fear of upsetting anyone. I found myself paying for a subscription that allowed me to match with girls from other countries. I have kept myself in shape and I like to think I'm an easygoing and simple man, so I was looking for someone who could match my energy. I landed on a girl living in Saigon, Vietnam. She was a stunner in my eyes. A village girl who taught yoga as her job while I was getting to know her. Before this, she quit her teaching job at a school for young children to leave her village and pursue her dreams of owning a yoga studio in Saigon. She crept out of her family house at the age of 22, got on her scooter in the middle of the night and drove hours to Saigon. To earn a living when she first got to the big city, she told me she was a waitress until she got her yoga certificate and was able to land a couple of clients. At the time, when we were getting to know each other through video chatting on Messenger, little did I know what a waitress meant in Ho Chi Minh City. Keep in mind, I was doing something out of the ordinary for me, and it was a rush of excitement. So I booked a ticket to Saigon just as COVID came to an end. Here I was, never travelled to Asia before, in a foreign airport, within a month of Vietnam opening up to tourism again, meeting a woman 22 years my junior. As she promised, she was outside the airport waiting for me, and she was drop-dead gorgeous. I was in heaven. Long story short, she was a lovely girl, and I enjoyed her company very much. The aerobics were amazing, too amazing, which partly clued me into her past a little bit. So once I found out what waitress meant, bar girl, my guard went up. By the end of our vacation together, I wished she was a waitress in her previous life. Smitten or not, it was obvious it was just my turn. And the day after I left, she was back at a bar because her meal ticket didn't happen and her yoga studio was on hold. I can't blame her for the choices she made to survive though. Working as she does to pay the bills and send money back home is her best option. So I can't judge her except saying that dating a girl like this for me, loving and a loyal future simply isn't for me. At least with this job, it does give her the best opportunity of meeting a Western man that she prefers. And I believe she has found one to pay her bills and get her out of the bar to focus on her yoga dream. He's a lucky man in many ways, but unfortunately that kind of transactional relationship isn't what I'm searching for. Since that first experience, which I consider an overall positive experience, I've been back a few times to Southeast Asia to vacation and to date. I have several stories I can share and will if you like. Suffice to say, it seems I have found love with a Thai Chinese descendant girl and if all goes according to plan, we should be married by the end of 2024. So well done to him, he's actually found somebody that he's going to marry. Uh, that last story, the story that she told him about the yoga, uh, you know, setting up her own yoga school, that's probably a lie because what happens with bar girls sometimes, when they get a guy who's very interested in them, they'll make up some kind of a story to kind of get extra cash. I once knew a guy who fell in love with a bar girl in Pattaya 
and uh, she span a story about she wanted to quit the bars and she wanted to work in a massage parlor well as far as i'm concerned it's near enough the same thing right uh, but he he was a little bit naive and he he kind of thought of it as a regular massage a regular job and she told him look it's going to cost 30,000 baht for a course and because he was pretty much in love with this girl he wanted her to stop the bar and take a regular job or what he thought was a regular job so he basically gave a 30,000 baht to go on a massage course and of course you know how it turned out it just never happened and these are some of the tricks that bar girls use just to extract extra cash from you so all these stories about wanting to learn massage and I want to open a school and I want to do this and I want to do that most of the time it's just lies uh, just trying to scam you okay let's jump into story number two Hey Peter, this story is a little bit different than your usual and some would say it's not even that bad but the humiliation I felt after actually having this experience makes me sick. It did not happen in Thailand. Actually in Pattaya, Thailand the girls were absolutely incredible and genuine. I even had free aerobics with girls that I had bar find who just decided to stay with me a couple of more days. I am 27, I think I'm attractive but who knows. I work out a lot and I love to party. I started my trip in Phuket, Thailand and moved all the way through. I absolutely love Thailand and I never felt unsafe or cheated. Not even once. My story is in Vietnam and I want it to be a warning to other guys who might travel there. This happened to me in Hanoi. Unfortunately, I didn't have any luck meeting ladies in Vietnam and I didn't have aerobics with Vietnamese girls yet. I didn't want to go to the go-go bars in Saigon because they were empty and I don't want to go there and feel like a weirdo. Although I am young, I wouldn't go to a go-go bar when it's empty because I know it will make me easy prey. And also, I like an atmosphere where there are lots of people energising in the party. So I was very frustrated and my confidence started to go downhill. For example, in Cambodia and Laos, meeting local women was no hassle. I didn't pay even once other than food and drinks. But in Vietnam, I felt like it is way harder. I think Vietnamese girls are very pretty and also more traditional. I met this girl on Tinder. She called herself Jasmine. Only one picture on Tinder and one picture on Instagram. A red flag for sure, but I decided to ignore this because I was thinking about aerobics with her. Long story short, we met. She is a beautiful 23-year-old. She tells me she has a business. We get a couple of beers and really enjoy each other's company. At least it seemed that way. She insists on splitting the bill. I was impressed, but now I know it was a trick, number one, to make me think she's a genuine lady. After the bar closed at around 12 a.m., we went to a nightclub. She immediately ordered 12 shots, which cost me 40 US dollars, or 1,500 baht. That's a short time there. I didn't expect it, but because financially I am stable, I let it slide. Her tactic was to order more and more, and when I confronted her about that, she offered to pay. Now, I know it sounds like there is no problem, but my ego didn't let me let her pay, so I basically kept paying. She kept ordering things, and when I told her to stop, she said that she can pay. When the bill was around $200, I said enough is enough. I told her to pay if she wants more. That's when she told me that I can leave. I felt pretty stupid. I literally watched all of your videos and I got scammed by this girl so easily. I was so drunk that night, it took me a long time to realize that she was playing my ego against me. Every time she would order things, she would do it behind my back with the same waitress. The bill comes and I'm too drunk to understand what's going on. Also, because I have a big eagle, I don't want to embarrass myself and I pay. What an idiot. Luckily, I came to my senses and I realized I'm spending way too much, so I left. Overall, I spent around 8 million dong that night, which is around 8,000 baht. Imagine what I could have got in Thailand for the same amount of money. She was so hot, I was totally not thinking straight. I left the club like a moron, but at least I didn't keep paying for her bills. What an idiot I am. My advice to guys, please set up a budget for your dates. If you match with a girl and get to know her, pay her bills. But once you reach your comfort zone, leave. Stupid me. Thanks, Peter. I had to let it go. Lesson learned. Overall, Vietnam is a great country. Nicest people I've ever met. But if you ask me, Thailand's go-go experience is way more genuine. I never fall in love and I love to spend money on a girl for one night. 
but I don't like being used. If the aerobics had have happened, then I wouldn't be writing this. But I can't tell anyone, so I'll tell it to Peter and he can tell you. I enjoy your channel a lot. Your videos taught me a lot about Thailand. I just want guys to also be careful of this type of scam. I met great girls on Tinder in Asia and many free aerobics and a great dating experience. That one incident has taught me to be much more careful and I'm a lot more cautious than I used to be. So if you match with a shady profile or even a genuine one anywhere in Asia, set that budget for that evening. After that budget has been reached, see if she goes home with you. If not, you are probably being used like I was. For me, it was a small hit, just $200. A good lesson, and I hope this story saves one guy from spending his money to impress a hot Tinder date. If I'd continued to take the bait, I'm sure that girl would have taken me for a lot more money. Luckily, it didn't happen, and I hope it doesn't happen to you. It sounds like he didn't really lose a lot of money, did he? A couple of hundred dollars is nothing really in the grand scale of things, but it sounds like his ego was kind of heavily damaged, you know, that somebody got one on, up on him. Uh, I'm a little bit like that myself. If somebody uh, scammed me and it was just a small bit of money, it's the fact that someone actually got one over on me that actually annoys me more than the money. But what he's talking about, going to a nightclub and a girl ordering lots of drinks. Seems like the waitress was in on it probably for a cut. But this seems to happen a lot in China. I've, I've watched a lot of videos and heard stories about guys who they're just walking through, say, Tenement Square in China and somebody will approach them, a couple of girls who speak quite good English and on the pretext that they want to speak English with a foreigner and then they invite... Uh, the guy to some kind of a small bar or tea house, something like that. Uh, and then the, they just start ordering masses of drinks and food. He has difficulty getting out of there because guys, you know, big guys stand in front of the door until he's paid the bill. And it's, it's all a big scam, you know. So you've got to be very, very careful in these countries. Right, straight into story number three. I sent in a story last year about a freelancer who started talking to herself in my room after four beers. This is my second trip to Thailand, and I had a blast. I spent the first week in Bangkok, and then the second week in Pattaya. This time, I bar find a couple of girls in one week. On my last night in Pattaya, I decided to end my trip with a bang and went to Beach Road for a last-minute romp. I met this very attractive girl about 30 years old. She had a big, beautiful chest tattoo, which is a red flag number one. I'm not into tattoos, and the crazy girl from last year had a big tattoos on her back, but her innocent, beautiful smile won me over. She was also naturally well endowed, which is unusual for a Thai girl. She said 2,000 baht for short time. I wanted to hang out for a while, so I told her, I'll give you 2,000 baht for each hour you spend with me. She was happy and asked for 2,000 baht up front. I gave it to her, and off to Walking Street we went. We went into a bar with a live band. I was drinking water and Diet Pepsi. She was drinking beers. I was having the time of my life, dancing around and singing to the music. She seemed to be having a good time also. Even though she kept going to the bathroom, remembering what happened last year after that other freelancer went crazy after four beers, I suggested no more beers after the second one. She reassured me that she can handle more. After the fourth beer and dancing around, we caught a scooter to my hotel on Beach Road. Everything seemed to be going great. We get to the room and she seems a little drunk, but not enough to ask me for the remainder of the money. I gave her 2,000 baht, then she laid on the bed looking a little worn out. She then goes to the bathroom and starts vomiting in the toilet. I'm not feeling it and really in the mood anymore after witnessing her condition. When I saw her face... When she came out of the bathroom, she looked like a, a different person. Her mood and facial expression had changed. I was feeling deja vu from my experience last year with the other freelancer. She states she needs to meet someone outside to give them 1,000 baht. I said to myself, here we go again. I said, I'll go with you, but she says, no, you stay here. Then I explained, I can't let you wander around in this building. This hotel is high-rise and low-rise elevators, and you have to walk around the hall to change from one elevator to the next. In other words, one eleva elevator can't take you from the main floor to the floors with the rooms. So we get outside. She states she has to meet a lady boy at the 7-Eleven on the corner. I said, I'll come with you. She starts yelling, just stay here. 
People started turning around looking at us. I said okay to calm her down and accepted the fact she wasn't going to come back. I said I paid you already. She said the concierge has her ID and she's coming back. I watched her stumble away, never to return, I thought. I asked the concierge for her ID. He stated, I can't give it to you. It's her ID. It's her property. I said she's waiting for me on the corner for me to give it to her. I convinced him to give it to me. Now I had a decision to make. I could even get even by keeping it, knowing I'm leaving Thailand in a few hours. But I would get the concierge in trouble for giving me her ID. We have a good relationship and I didn't want to do that. I thought about it and realised she had already spent two hours with me and only, I only owed her for an hour of her time. So actually, I only lost 1,000 baht, which is 28 US dollars. I wrote a note stating, I hope you did something good with the money you took. The concierge helped me attach the note to her ID and I promised to give it to her. Maybe she'll lose some face. So guess what I did after that? Back off to Beach Road I went. I can't end my stay on a sour note. I ran into a pretty girl, 1,500 baht for short time. She said, I've got a scooter, and she rolled me back to the hotel. I filmed us while riding with my phone on a selfie stick. She was sticking her tongue out at the camera and waving with one hand on the handlebars. I grew up riding motorcycles, so this experience and her playful personality made me forget all about what happened a few minutes earlier. The funny part was while leaving the hotel with this girl, the concierge thought this was the original girl and tried to give me the other girl's ID again. Freelancers are hit and miss, but I find it exciting to be casually walking down the street interviewing pretty women for a potential session of aerobics. I just won't break my two drink max and no big tattoo rules next time. Okay, so I'm glad that worked out for the guy. A bit of a sour start, but ended well anyway. Right, let's go into story number four. This is the last of the shorter stories, and I've got a longer one as story five. Hi, Peter. I've enjoyed listening to your viewers' stories, albeit I am a bit late, only having found your site in the last six months. Better late than never. I don't have extensive experience of visiting or living in Thailand. I have visited probably five or six times. However, I have also travelled extensively throughout Asia and other parts of the world and can relate well to the stories your viewers entertain us with. I had some good friends living in Singapore. I would go to visit for occasional vacations. The best ones were the ones in Thailand. On one occasion, we went sailing in the Andaman Sea, starting in Phuket, going to Phi Phi, Krabi Islands, etc. There was about 12 of us on two yachts having a wonderful, blissful time. Wind in our hair, barbecue on board, sailing to remote harbours for dinner, wild nights ashore, etc. We even had the fruit dur durans hanging over the side for some reason. It was all going great. That was until one day near the end of the trip, the skippers decided to anchor and most of the crews went to the motorboats to visit nearby Hongs, which are caves in the rocks. Myself and one of the guys from Singapore and his girlfriend, who was from Hong Kong, stayed on board the yachts. After a bit, the girl decided she wants to have a swim off the back of the boat. This was a very bad idea, as within seconds she was swept away by the current and was 30 to 40 metres away from the boat. She did not have a life vest on, and the motorboats were inside the caves, so there was no easy way to reach her. My friend probably saved my life that day as I was getting ready to jump in with a life vest to try and help the girl. He stopped me from doing it on the basis that one in trouble is more manageable than two. This turned out to be a good decision as within a few seconds out of nowhere a Thai fisherman was zooming across in a long tail boat. By some miracle he was able to see her, hear her shouting and pointing to the girl. The Thai guy was a hero. He immediately understood and went over at full speed and pulled the girl out. She was shocked but otherwise unscathed. The Thai guy was so dignified he tried to give him we tried to give him money which he would not accept. I know some stories on the channel do not speak well to of some Thai behaviors, but this fisherman, believe me, represents the majority of Thais. 
Just a quick story with a slightly different pers perspective. I have more to follow at a later time. So this is something that I've, I've actually mentioned a few times. You know, most ties are very, very honest. It's just, you know, when you're hanging around in kind of go-go bars and beer bars in around Patty, you, you do kind of come across the worst of the worst as far as honesty goes. I told you the story about when I lost 20,000 baht at an elevator in the Omni Tower and one of the maids found it uh, and I got all the money back. I ended up giving her a thousand uh, but, but a lot of the time, you know, people here, when foreigners come here for the first time, they think it can fix any problem with money, and it's not always the case. A lot of times, ties won't take money off you. And there's a, there was a guy, a, a, quite a new YouTuber that I've seen, uh, an American guy who came here. He was in Patty, and he was basically acting tough and kicking bins around and just disrespecting people. And he, he walked past one Golga bar, and he, he kicked a bin or pushed a table over something, and a bunch of the security, the ties, came after him. Uh, to tell him not to behave like that uh, and and it was a complete turnaround he started saying oh sorry i didn't mean it i'm gonna pay i'm gonna give you money and he kept kind of trying to pay them off say look i'm gonna give you money thinking it would make the problems go away but the ties said to him look we don't want your money but you need to show some respect you don't come here and talk to us like that and he kind of was lucky to get away from it so yeah a lot of the time you know money doesn't buy everything uh, and a lot of a lot of the ties most of the ties i would say are, are pretty pretty honest. Right, this is a story that I read out. This is the longest last story today, uh, story number five. This is a story that I read out on this channel probably about four and a half years ago. It's a great story, and the reason I'm reading it out today is because back then I didn't have as many subscribers, which I do mention sometimes. I'm nearly up to 60,000 now. And it's just such a good story. I thought, why not? Let's read it out again for the people who didn't hear it the first time round. Okay, if you've heard it, you can switch off and there'll be more next week, as I always say. Right, straight in. I stumbled across your YouTube channel by accident one day and have now become somewhat of a regular, often sitting down and listening to the stories of people's adventures in Thailand. I only went to Pattaya once and my story is in two parts. I don't really have a lot of time to write out a story, but I felt it was important because it will help others out, which is why I call it passing on the baton of knowledge. I wish I could have read such stories before I visited Thailand. I will also be reliving fond memories as I write. It was a trip I will never forget. About 25 years ago, my boss at the time used to speak about Pattaya. I remember he used to go to China on a buying trip once every year, and a friend he went with had taken him to Pattaya on the way back and introduced him to everything Pattaya had to offer. I had ne never really thought about it at the time, and I only got a very brief explanation of what happened. The place didn't sound that exciting to me at the time. I had other interests. Fast forward exactly 20 years to about 2016, and I was working in a remote location with this guy that I had befriended, and we had got along really well. This guy has now passed away, so it makes our trip extra special, and that this will be something I will always have to remember. He said to me one day, let's book a trip to Thailand. Visiting Thailand was not something that had crossed my mind in the past. I mean, it's never been discussed with my friends. I thought about it for a while and I thought, hey, why not? Let's visit Thailand. I wanted to go because my friend had good knowledge of Pattaya, so I shouldn't come unstuck on my first trip. I highly doubt I would have been brave enough to make the trip on my own had I not been with somebody who was familiar with Pattaya. I think the language barrier would have knocked my confidence, but I didn't know it then, but just about everybody in Pattaya speaks very good English anyway, and that includes most of the bar girls. We booked the tickets and accommodation through the internet. It was the first time I have booked accommodation using the internet, as I'm not a big traveller. Seven days in Pattaya, staying just off the second road, and two days in Bangkok, staying at the Warraburi Hotel on Sukhumvit Soy 4. My friend was so excited and reassured me that I was going to love it, and as it happened, I really did love it. We flew into Bangkok, and my friend showed me how to negotiate a fixed rate to Pattaya with a taxi driver, and then we were on our way. As we came into Pattaya, I saw my first ever BART bus, and I couldn't believe school kids were riding to school in the back of an open pickup truck. I also I started to see many scooters with kids front and back. It was really an experience to see how different everything is. Once we had booked into our hotel, I went straight to the beach road and straight to McDonald's and had a large cappuccino. I can still remember it was 125 baht in 2016. 
As I sat down, I thought this is going to be a cheap holiday, but when I did the maths at 25 baht to one Australian dollar, I worked out I'd just paid five dollars for a large cappuccino, which at that time was more expensive than in Australia. I thought there must be some mistake, but I learned my first important lesson. There is two currencies in Patia, the tourist dollar and the local baht. I only bought three coffees the whole time I was in Thailand and I, av I avoided McDonald's from then on. I found it offensive that in a country where the income can be so low, tourists sit in places that most local people could not afford to eat. I used to walk through Central Festival and come out the other end because it was easy access to the beach and was air conditioned, but I found the place depressing, being such a fancy and expensive place that only some could ever afford to buy products in this mall. I then did what anyone could do. I discovered a little lady at a street cart just outside our hotel who made nice meals. I sought out a local 7-Eleven, both became my food hangouts for this holiday. There was a whole variety of street carts in a nearby street, but I just could not bring myself to even try what they had on offer as they did not look as nice as the one just outside of my hotel. Once I had established myself with this lady, I stayed with her for the rest of my trip. My first experience with the local ladies was actually my friend's encounter. One evening, when me and my friend were walking along the beach road, I was walking behind him and this girl came up from behind my friend and took his arm and started to walk beside him, chatting as they went along. At the time, I can remember being offended because she was older and I didn't think she was all that attractive. And the fact that she had just come up and approached us in this way was not polite. I thought, I don't want to be put in a similar situation. My friend was more than 10 years older than me, so I guess he was looking through different eyes. I sort of didn't really even want to talk to her, so I just kept walking along and looking at all the sights along the beach road. As it turned out, this girl worked her magic on my friend, and before I knew it, he had come to an arrangement with her to hang out with her for an entire week. I felt compelled to write this story because I assumed wrongly. I didn't want regular company and so only hung out with girls on the odd night and actually hung around with my friend and his new girl. Which they did not mind and she actually turned out to be a tremendously nice person. I fully understand that these girls are working at the end of the day to send money back to their families. But I was very surprised at how nice they can be towards us. They really make you feel welcome. No wonder Patia is so popular with guys. I remember one day she took us up all these back alleys and we ended up in some market that you could never have found unless you lived there. We were in the same shopping area as a local shop and prices were cheap. We stopped in this little shop and had a cold drink taking a few pictures that we would cherish forever. She also took us to a few local sites and shrines before taking my friend to an island and the big temple on the hill. I didn't want to go on these extended trips and so I stayed behind and chilled out by the pool. My friend was off sightseeing with his new holiday girlfriend while I sat by the pool surfing the internet, pretty much as I did at home every day. I guess some people will listen to this and think, what a waste of money going on holiday and surfing the internet all day, but I was happy. I noticed an old man in the pool and a girl who looked to be around 24 or 25 sitting on the edge of the pool. They were paying each other so much attention. I think it was at that point that the penny dropped and I realised why guys get hooked on patia. Having such busy lives sometimes, we don't stop or we don't have the time to spare for such simple encounters. It was really quite remarkable and I'll never forget how they just had so much time for each other. If you strip away all the complications and assets of modern day life, perhaps this is all that really matters. The end of this story wasn't a train wreck as some viewers are used to it, but the end is sad. My friend was obsessed with this beautiful lady in one of the second road massage parlours and he couldn't be sure if it was a lady boy or not. I think the lure of the lady boy had gotten to him. What basically happened was my friend and this girl he hooked up with for a week were at dinner together at this outdoor restaurant and this other girl from the massage parlour walked past our table. My friend just couldn't help himself striking up a conversation with this girl, but the real problem started when the conversation went on for about 40 minutes. I'm not exactly sure if it was the exact time, but I do know while he was chatting to this other girl, or boy, 
me and his holiday girlfriend were eating our meal and looking at each other thinking is this really happening we were so uncomfortable he was totally wrapped up in conversation with this other girl and was completely ignoring the one he had spent the week with i thought it might be a brief conversation with this second lady but after what seemed like an eternity the girl he had been with got up and she stormed off i followed her out and i can't remember what i said but i remember her saying he has paid me anyway and with that the girl had gone she had been so warm and welcoming just like that she was gone i went back to my friend and said do you realize that these girls have feelings you realize that don't you he was oblivious to the hurt he had just caused her and guilt suddenly came across his face after that he barely said a word for the rest of the night i think he was embarrassed thinking about what he had done it truly was a sad ending and we wished it could have ended any other way than how it worked out i also did two insensitive things i regret i regret to this day patter is a place where you almost step outside of yourself it can consume you I don't drink, but if you're a big drinker or party animal, I can see how Patia and the female population can quickly take over your life and your cash. You really must be careful, but I had a great time. Sometimes I think I could just sell everything and move there to retire. I can see why people do. After walking the length of the coconut bar on Beach Road, I had found a girl that had caught my eye, but I was a bit shy to approach her. As we walked back trying to find her in the dark, I noticed her and I paused long enough that she approached me. Her name was Mim and I ended up spending a night with her and she convinced me to make that two nights with plans to meet at 4pm the next day outside the hotel. Sometime on the second day, I decided two nights wasn't really such a good idea so I started thinking how I could break my plans. I went down to the outside of the hotel just before 4pm hoping she wouldn't show up. You wouldn't believe it, but at 3 minutes 59 seconds, Mim came around the corner on a scooter. You could set your watch, your watch by her accuracy. I was thinking about how I was going to end this situation. Eventually, taking her for a walk and offering to pay for her time, but calling it a day with her. Well, I guess this was my first major patty mistake. It's not like returning a broken toaster, is it? She was so upset that I didn't want to be with her and the money didn't make any difference. I felt really awful. It wasn't like I was going out with another girl because I ended up just having a few drinks alone and going home to bed. One wise tip, never agree to meet a girl on multiple nights unless you are sure you want to stay with the same girl. I guess they all try it, but I learned the hard way. I did go out with him on other nights later but i know she was still angry with me i took her facebook details but as i i have never returned i never spoke to her again she was a nice girl and you could easily fall for one of these girls they all have a very nice nature about them a bar, bar girl relationship may end up as a train wreck and sometimes it doesn't but i can see why guys do it anyway Another experience which I really feel bad for to this day is the night we went to Walking Street. I went with my friend and his friend. The second friend knew exactly what bars to go to and how long to stay. In fact, he knew every trick in the book and this is the value of having someone pass on their knowledge to a first-time visitor to Patia. As the night wore on, I got progressively more intoxicated until we ended up at our last bar where this tiny and beautiful girl came up and sat next to me. It was decided she would return with me to the hotel and I could not have been happier. We went and had a quick bite to eat before turning up at the hotel for what I thought was going to be the best night of the trip. For those that don't know, the hotel reception will always take the girl's identity card and keep it until the morning. This is for the safety of the guest as well as a girl only returning the girl's ID to them once you have said all is well. I had no idea this system existed but it was really reassuring and acts like insurance. Anyway this night we get to reception and this beautiful girl I had with me has no identity card on her. I look at the reception staff and they told me that she could stay with me but if there are any problems, you are on your own and we cannot be responsible. I might have had a bit of alcohol in me, but I wasn't so drunk that I was going to let my guard down. I think we actually got in the elevator before I worked out that I must be going to get scammed here. 
How could a girl working in this industry not know that you need to have your identity card to get into the hotels? She looked so innocent, but I just couldn't take a chance. So we went back to reception. She offered to take me back to her place, to which I agreed to, but I already felt that she had deceived me by turning up at the hotel without an ID card. We ended up walking miles up Second Road in the direction of Jomptian Beach. I think we ended up under a freeway underpass. I just kept thinking she is planning to scam me and how on earth could someone so beautiful and innocent do such a thing? We eventually arrived at her room. However, as soon as she went inside, I turned and ran most of the way back to my hotel and just went to bed. I don't even remember which bar we were in, so I couldn't go back and make things right. I feel bad that it was her only way of making an income and she might not have scammed me after all. She didn't make any money, but I can't help feeling like she should have known she, was, she would need her identity card to enter a hotel. Was it an honest oversight or was she going to steal stuff out of my room? Near to the end of our time in Patia, me and my friend who had often offended the girl he should have been with for a week decided to go to Beach Road and find a couple of girls to spend some time with. I ended up finding and talking to Mim and my friend was still trying to work out if the girl in the massage parlour was a ladyboy or not. Mim played this spotting competition and pointed to this beautiful girl and asked, is that a ladyboy? I said, no way, and she said, yes it is. I didn't believe her, so we called this girl across and she confirmed that she was in fact a ladyboy. The girl confirmed that they identify as women and feel like women, but they aren't always allowed to have surgery to make them that way. I kind of felt sorry for them actually. It may have been dark, but there is just no way to believe that such a beautiful girl could be a ladyboy. My friend wanted to know about this other girl, so what ended up happening was that Mim had a friend with her on the beach, so we did a deal. Mim would come with me and we would walk past the massage parlour and Mim would see if it was in fact a ladyboy or not. If it was a ladyboy, my friend would take Mim's friend for the night, but if the girl in the massage parlour was not a ladyboy, my friend would go and ask her out. With that decided, we walked across to Mim's scooter and she hinted for me to drive. I said no way and so Mim drove to the second road. We got off and started walking towards the massage parlour. We were a fair way away when Mimset turned to me and she said, Ladyboy, I asked, are you sure? And we went right past and circled past a second time, but she was convinced it was a ladyboy. We went back to Mim's friend and the four of us went back to the hotel. Of course, Mim was still mad at me and of course she could have lied about the supposed ladyboy in the massage shop just so that my friend would be put off and go back with her friend, which is what we did. The next morning we went to breakfast and afterwards departed Patia with the best memories of a trip ever. Patia is very unique to any other place in the world. I enjoyed Patia and two days in Bangkok were also enjoyable. I walked past Nana Plaza several times but never went in. I guess that's for the next time. So I, I think that was quite a good story and uh, I don't think he offended the girls too much. You know, they're used to that kind of thing with you get a lot of silly uh, Western customer, well, a lot of silly foreigners from all sorts of countries in Patia who do all sorts of things. So I'm sure the girls are used to it. But, you know, you should always treat them with respect. As the guy says, at the end of the day, they are human. Right, that's it from me. Uh, this is a bit of a longer upload than usual, but I'll be back with some more stories next Saturday. Thank you very much for uh, listening to me today, and, and I'll catch you real, real soon.